Hi, I'm Dawn with Drucker Diagnostics, and today we're going to review the basic operations of your 642B centrifuge. If you're looking for something specific, take a look at the bottom of your screen. This video is divided into chapters so you can easily find what you need. 642B Basic Operations Guide Part 1 Unboxing the 642B Your 642B will arrive packaged from Drucker's factory. To unbox it, you will need a flathead screwdriver like the one shown here. Use the flathead screwdriver to release the staples that are holding your box closed. Once the box is open, you will be able to lift your centrifuge out. You will have your centrifuge, the attached cord, and an accessories bag all together in the box. Part 2. Setting up the 642B Let's start by making sure we have all our necessary accessories. These came out of the accessory bag packed in with your centrifuge. You'll need your tube holders and your centrifuge with its attached power cord. If you're missing anything, please contact Drucker Diagnostics. Start by placing the centrifuge on a flat, level, sturdy surface. Leave at least six inches or 15 centimeters on all sides and at least 21 inches, 54 centimeters height above the lid so you can easily open it. Locate the power cord on the back of your 642B and plug it into the wall. Make sure your outlet is easily accessible so you can unplug your centrifuge for cleaning and maintenance. Now we can twist our lid latch and lift the lid open. You can see our rotor here inside. Your 642B comes with its rotor installed and ready to run. All we need to do is place our tube holders. You will need to place all six tube holders, even if you are not spinning six tubes. You can see the slots all around the rotor. Place a tube holder in each. Properly seated tube holders can be moved slightly in their slots. This is by design, and that's what allows them to rise into their horizontal spin position they do not click or snap into place. Your 642B has only authentic Drucker Diagnostics parts, including rotor and tube holders. You should only use authentic Drucker Diagnostics parts in your centrifuge, as anything else may damage your centrifuge or even be dangerous. Now that we have our 642B set up, we can look at our controls. Part three, controls overview. Your 642B runs at a speed of 3400 RPM, or 1600 XG. Your time is adjustable. Today, we're going to learn how to adjust that time and how that time adjustment operates your centrifuge. Your 642B has all of its controls right here on the front panel. This knob here controls the time. It is also the centrifuge's on switch. The numbers around the timer knob indicate minutes of spin. To start the 642B, simply turn the dial to the number of minutes you want to spin. The centrifuge will start automatically. The rotor will begin to accelerate and the centrifuge will run for the time selected before slowing down. To stop the centrifuge mid-cycle, simply twist the lid latch. The rotor will immediately begin slowing down. Once it has come to a full stop, you may open the lid and remove your samples. And those are your controls. Now let's look at how to load your 642B and spin your first samples. Part four, spinning samples. When loading the 642B or any centrifuge, it is important to make sure you load the samples in a way that keeps the rotor balanced. Loading balanced samples helps keep the lab safe and ensures the maximum lifespan for your centrifuge. Step one, make sure that all six tube holders are properly seated in the 642B rotor. They do not snap into place, but should be seated one per slot in the rotor. Step two, load your samples. When loading your samples, opposing tube holders must be of equal weight, as shown in the diagram on your screen. So, if we're loading two tubes, just put them across from each other. If it's three, make a triangle, four, a square, and so on. If you're spinning an odd number of tubes, you'll need a counterbalance tube. This should be an identical tube filled with an equivalent volume of water from the tube across from it. 
the counterbalance should be roughly the same weight as your filled tube. With your tube holders in place and your samples loaded and balanced, you're ready to spin. Close the lid. Secure the lid latch by pressing it down gently and turning it a quarter turn counterclockwise. Next, select your time using the timer knob. The numbers around this knob indicate minutes of spin time. You may select any value from 0 to 30 minutes. In our case, we're going to run for 3 minutes, but you can run whatever time you like. Once you set the timer, the centrifuge will start automatically. The rotor will begin to accelerate and the centrifuge will run for the time selected. Once the run is complete, the centrifuge will begin to slow down, eventually reaching a complete stop. You may then open the lid and retrieve your samples. Remember, your 642B has adjustable time, but its speed is preset and cannot be changed. It will always spin at 3400 RPM, which is 1600 XG. And that's all there is to it. You just ran your first cycle. Now, let's look at how you should clean and maintain your 642B. Part 5, Cleaning and Maintaining Your 642B. Your 642B requires no regular maintenance. Cleaning is easy too. Start by unplugging your 642B from the wall. Make sure to wear appropriate PPE in accordance with your lab's policies. Use isopropyl alcohol or 10% 5500 ppm bleach solution to clean. Only the approved isopropyl alcohol or 10% bleach solution should be used. Any other substance is not approved and may cause damage to your centrifuge and void the warranty. Apply your isopropyl alcohol or 10% bleach solution with a cloth. Do not submerge the centrifuge in water. If necessary, the rotor may be removed for easier cleaning. Links to our videos on how to remove and reinstall the rotor are popping up on your screen now. Dry your 642B immediately after finishing cleaning and disinfecting, and then be sure it's plugged in and turned on so it's ready for the next use. Your 642B does not require any regular maintenance, but you may wish to confirm the spin speed. To do that, you'll need your facility's calibrated photo tachometer. Ours is shown here for reference. Your rotor has a reflective strip on it, so the photo tachometer can easily detect the speed. Start a five minute spin, wait a minute or so for it to reach its peak speed, and point your photo tachometer down through the clear lid. You'll quickly get a reading. And that brings us to the end of our basic operations for the 642B. We've set up our centrifuge and reviewed its accessories. We reviewed our controls and spun our first cycle. And we learned how to clean and maintain it. If you have any questions about your 642B, you can always contact Drucker Customer Service and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching and have a great day.